Canada Pension Plan CPP and Old Age Security OS payouts were both significantly increased just minutes ago, according to a remarkable announcement by the Canadian government. This news has caused quite a stir among the elderly, and it has the potential to change the financial situation for millions of retirees around the country. When the dust settles on this historic proclamation, Canadian seniors must grasp the gravity of the changes and how they will influence their day-to-day -day life and future financial stability. Old Age Security and the Canada Pension Plan have been pillars of the Canadian retirement income system for many years. Countless retirees have been able to keep up their standard of living because to these two safety nets. Concerns over these programs' ability to adequately address the demands of today's seniors have been on the rise in tandem with the expense of living and life expectancy. These worries and the need for a stronger safety net for Canada's aging population are the motivations behind the recently announced hikes. The recent modifications to the Canada Pension Plan will serve as our starting point. Since its establishment in 1966, the Contributory Public Pension Plan CPPPP has provided Canadians with a steady stream of income in retirement. For the sake of its continued viability and applicability, it has experienced multiple revisions throughout the years. Another major milestone in its evolution has been reached with the most recent increase. A 7.3% increase to the maximum monthly benefit for new retirees at age 65 is effective immediately, marking a significant increase to CPP benefits. The maximum monthly payment has increased from $1,217.66 to $1,306.57 as a result of this increase. An automatic adjustment will be made to the payments of seniors who are currently receiving CPP benefits to reflect this increase. The precise amount that each person gets is contingent upon a number of factors, such as their age when they started receiving benefits, the amount and duration of their CPP contributions, and other similar factors. The CPP increase has far-reaching implications. A more pleasant retirement could be within reach for many seniors if they receive this extra cash. Housing, food, and health care are all necessities that might be better covered. Additionally, it might give some retirees the financial freedom to do things that improve their quality of life, like take trips, pursue hobbies, or spend more time relaxing with loved ones. It must be understood, however, that not everyone is equally impacted by this increase. This raise will be fully realized for those who have paid the maximum amount into CPP during their working years. A smaller increase to monthly payments may be in store for seniors with less stable incomes or gaps in their work history. This highlights the significance of knowing one CPP contribution history and making retirement preparations accordingly. We find changes that are just as substantial when we shift our focus to the old age security program, the OS in contrast to the CPP is a pension program that does not require contributions and is supported by general tax resources. Eligible seniors receive a baseline retirement income regardless of their job history. There is good news for those who receive OS as well, thanks to the latest statement. The basic OS pension will see a 3.5% boost starting from today. For seniors between the ages of 65 and 74, this means a new maximum monthly payment of $687.56, an increase from $664.41, the highest monthly payment will be $756.32 for seniors 75 and older who will receive an extra 10% on their OAS payments due to a provision implemented in 2022. Because it is available to all eligible seniors regardless of their employment status or CPP contributions, this OAS boost is very noteworthy. This increase might significantly affect the financial stability of many low-income seniors whose main source of income is OS. Particularly in sectors like housing and healthcare, it has the potential to reduce some of the financial burden caused by increasing cost of living. More than simply the basic pension is affected by the OAS increase. Additionally, low-income OAS will receive more money under the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs. A greater amount of assistance will be provided to the lowest income seniors who are already among our most vulnerable population. The monthly ceiling for GIs for seniors living alone will rise to $1,026.96. Couples, on the other hand, will see a monthly maximum increase to $618.96. Both the CPP and OS payment increases have a significant cumulative impact. This can result in an extra $1,400 or more year for a senior getting the full CPP and OS payments. Although this amount may not appear to be substantial at first, it can greatly improve the quality of life for numerous retirees, particularly when added together over a number of years. It should be emphasized that these increases are not temporary fixes. Designed to keep up with the rising cost of living, both the CPP and OS are adjusted to inflation. 
Future inflation adjustments will be calculated using the freshly announced increases as the new baseline. This safeguards the purchase power of these benefits over time, giving seniors some financial stability despite economic swings. The good news is that these increases are happening, but there are a few things that Canadian seniors in those nearing retirement age need to know. Keep in mind that even with these increases, government pensions might still fall short of what many Canadians want for their retirement years. Retirees should strive to replace 70 to 80 percent of their pre-retirement income in order to maintain their lifestyle, according to financial experts. For a lot of people, this goal will not be met with just CPP and OAs, all the more reason to put away more money and make plans for retirement. Retirement savings accounts that are qualified an all-inclusive plan for retirement income must include investment vehicles such as RSPs and tax-free savings accounts, TFSSS. Rather than being seen as a substitute for personal savings and investments, the recent increases to CPP and OS should be seen as a supplement. In addition, these rises underscore the significance of continuous financial awareness and education for the elderly. In order to make the most of the opportunities presented, it is critical to comprehend the ways in which these developments influence one's own financial status. To make sure they are getting the most out of these higher benefits, seniors should check their retirement income plans often and get expert help if needed. Along with the announcement of these hikes, the larger problem of retirement security in Canada is brought to light. Aside from being a pleasant surprise, the increases to CPP and OS highlight the persistent difficulties that many seniors deal with. Concerns such as the increasing expense of health care, the lack of suitable housing for seniors, and the financial burden that many seniors bear when they are caregivers for spouses or other family members continue to be important issues. Not to mention that many seniors are still dealing with the financial consequences of the COVID-19 outbreak, and these increases are happening at the same time. In terms of health hazards and financial stability, the pandemic has disproportionately affected elderly Canadians. The market volatility of 2020 wiped out retirement funds for many seniors, forcing others to put off retirement or go back to work to make ends meet, given this setting. The much-needed boost to CPP and OAS is accompanied by the continuous need for comprehensive support for Canada's aging population, which is highlighted by these increases. What these increases will do to Canada's poverty rates among the elderly is another critical consideration. Many older Canadians continue to live below the poverty line, despite Canada's considerable progress in reducing elder poverty in recent decades, mostly due to programs such as CPP and OAS. The most recent increases, when coupled with other assistance programs like the GIs, may help more seniors escape poverty. But we must keep an eye on how well these initiatives are helping to alleviate senior poverty and be ready to make more changes if necessary. Intergenerational equity is another issue that is brought to light by the increases. It is critical to provide sufficient assistance for the elderly, but we must also think about how these programs will work in the future and how they will affect the next generation. One example is the CPP. Is planned to be financially independent, with contributions from present employees covering the costs of benefits for current retirees. The need of safeguarding the program's long-term sustainability is magnified due to the aging population and the declining worker-to-retire ratio. Fairness across generations and the country's general budgetary health must be balanced with the recent increases. The hiring decisions of seniors who are still working, whether it's part-time or full-time, can be affected by these increases. Whether or not to keep working may be affected by the extra money from higher CPP and OS payments, decrease work hours or retire entirely. In light of the possibility of OS clawbacks for higher income workers, it is crucial that working seniors be aware of how their employment income can influence their government benefits. It is important to keep aware about changes to government programs and how they affect seniors. The announcement of these hikes serves as a reminder of that. What is relevant now may not be in the future when it comes to retirement benefits because the landscape is always changing. Retirees in those nearing retirement age would do well to establish the practice of routinely perusing official announcements and actively searching out credible information regarding their benefits. It's vital to mention that these increases coincide with the growing importance of elders being digitally literate. Gaining access to benefits and remaining informed requires the ability to traverse digital platforms, as many government services and information sources are shifting online. This highlights the importance of continuing initiatives to promote digital literacy among Canadians aged 65 and higher. Making sure that they are able to make the most of the additional funds and other assistance programs that are available to them. Retirement arrangements are also affected by the increases to CPP and OS. Those who are still working may decide when to retire or how much to put into the CPP based on the prospect of better payments in the future. For example, with these increases, the option to postpone CPP benefits until after age 65 in return for larger payouts becomes even more appealing. 
These developments must be considered by retirement planners and financial advisors as they assist clients in getting ready for retirement. Not only that, but these hikes can influence how you decide to buy an annuity or how you draw down your resources for retirement. Retirees may have greater leeway in managing their own savings and assets if they are guaranteed a higher income from the government. The regional effects of these increases must also be carefully considered. Considering the wide range of prices across the country, how these enhancements the effects of CPP and OS on the elderly will vary by location. The hikes might help a little, but they probably won't make a huge dent in the budgets of many seniors living in expensive cities. The impact on seniors purchasing power and quality of life could be greater in locations with a lower cost of living, though.